Hello and welcome to another video and today I thought it would be fun as we kind of are in this month or month and a half, two month kind of lull between new systems that are coming out and as we continue the conversation of moving forward the game industry from the Xbox One and the PS4 to the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, I thought it would be fun today to take a look at three specific companies that have kind of fallen from grace and really dug themselves into the ground and maybe my ideas of what they could do to fix their current predicaments. We're gonna go ahead and jump right into it today. We're gonna to talk about these three companies right now. So the first company that I wanna talk about today specifically is already kind of making good on fixing some of their past mistakes. That is of course 343 Industries. So as you guys know, I'm a massive Halo fan. I really look forward to Halo Infinite. I think everything they've shown up to this point has been incredibly promising. Yes, are there some issues with the graphics? I understand there's some issues, people don't like that. It looks a little funky at times. I like the classic look of the game. However, the lighting is kind of questionable and hopefully that's something that can be addressed before launch. However, 343 Industries have massively dropped the ball with this franchise and Halo 5 Guardians. And that game specifically was so bad, that's why you haven't seen another mainline Halo this entire console generation. They kind of put all their bets on that one game and it failed so much that they just have spent the last five years underground making Halo Infinite. So the biggest things I would change here seem to be what they're changing, which is I want a Master Chief centered story for a mainline Halo game. You can have your offshoot games like Halo ODST or Halo Reach or even Halo Wars, which I know are a different type of Halo game being that they're strategy, but you can do all that with different characters. But when I personally sit down and play a mainline Halo game, be it numbered or be it part of a continuation of the Master Chief storyline, I want to play as Master Chief. I don't want to play as Spartan Lock. I don't want to play as the Arbiter, although the Arbiter was actually a pretty cool character, but I want to play as Master Chief. I want the story centered around that character because that's what I care about when I come to Halo. First and foremost is the story, the world and the lore, and then the multiplayer. And so Halo Infinite looks incredibly promising. I like the setup for what they are doing here, being you're kind of with this pilot guy on this big Halo ring. I like what they're doing with kind of showing a little bit of an open world, but it doesn't seem like it's a full open world, which is really potentially interesting and leads to a lot of discovery and a lot of those real big open sandboxes that Halo has been known to do wonderfully with some of the other Halo titles. You know, if I had to pick a Halo game that is my absolute favorite, it's always gonna be Halo 3. And I think this one specifically, Halo Infinite, that's coming out, I think that it's really showing a lot of promise. And I think they're doing a lot of great things with that story campaign. There is a little bit of scuttlebutt going around now. You know, the, the multiplayer apparently is going to be free to play. Uh, that does raise some huge concerns. It kind of has me look back upon Gears 5 last year and some of the terrible, terrible microtransactions they added to that game that just really threw that game under the ground. And I hope that Halo doesn't follow suit here because, yes, well, I primarily care about Master Chief, the story, the lore, all that stuff first. Secondly, I care about multiplayer, and while I can shit all day on Halo 5 for being a really shitty game, one thing I will pick out about that game that I thought was actually decent was the multiplayer. They did a really good job of going back and deciding, hey, what makes that core 4v4 really work well? And they did a great job with it. They just kind of dropped the ball when it came to big team battle. So for Halo and 343 Industries, I think they're on the right track. We're going to see this fall when Halo Infinite launches with the new system, how well that game works. And I think going forward, Halo is in pretty good hands. Again, people don't like to remember this, but Halo 4 was also made by 343 Industries. And I think that was one of the best story campaigns that Halo has had since Halo 1 and Halo 3. So... Halo 5, they just massively dropped the ball with it. And I think they're going to rein it in with Halo Infinite, and I think people are going to be really surprised at how well the story is crafted for that game. So, for the first company I want to talk about today, that's 343 Industries. For the second company I want to talk about today, it's, it's kind of one that everybody loves to bitch about. That is, of course, Bethesda. Bethesda, this generation, has dropped the ball so many times over and over and over again and they really need to just have this next Elder Scrolls game come out but they can't just put out another Elder Scrolls. They have to 
the, first and foremost, they have to have that new engine, right? Like, the biggest problem with Skyrim, the biggest problem with Fallout is they're using the same old-ass creation engine that they've used for Fallout 3, Oblivion, Skyrim, New Vegas. All those games use this creation engine. And then, of course, Fallout 4 used it as well. And that's where you start to see, still see all these massive bugs and stuff. I think the next Elder Scrolls game really needs to have a brand new engine and just be a jaw-dropping moment. Well, also, we need to move away from Skyrim. I mean, look at how many times Skyrim's been released. Skyrim has been released pretty much on every platform it can possibly be on, and I think the only game that would tie for it at this point in the current generation would be Grand Theft Auto V. So, that game is just littered everywhere. Then, on the other flip side of that, you have everything that happened with 76, you have all the people that are angry about that game. And I do think Bethesda took a huge risk at making a multiplayer type Fallout or Skyrim type game with Fallout 76. And I think some of those risks paid off, but most of them didn't. And so I would like to see them step away from that and just concentrate on the next Elder Scrolls. And I know what you guys are going to say. Well, they said they're doing Starfield first. Yes, but we haven't heard anything about Starfield since, what, E3 2018, 2016? Somewhere around there. It's been a long time. Obviously, both these games are going to be on the next generation of consoles. And Starfield still, supposedly, is before Elder Scrolls. So Starfield needs to be something new, different. I mean, hell, if that game is just a... Skyrim or Oblivion type RPG set in space sign me up that sounds really cool but again if that is the case then that game needs to debut with a new type of creation engine and not run on the same one or else you're just going to run into the same problems so before Bethesda they really need to just hone in on what they're known for and then also at the same time just kind of refine that and I think they're going to turn their ship around in other ways, they've actually slated this generation. Look at Doom. Look at the Doom 2016 reboot, one of the best games of this past console generation. Look at its sequel, Doom Eternal, a fantastic follow-up. Still probably the best game that I played in 2020 thus far. So not everything on Bethesda's side is bad. However, Bethesda only published Doom. They didn't develop it. That was developed by id Software. So they have some work to do, but I think they can turn their ship around. And the third and final company I want to talk about is, of course, BioWare. So BioWare is probably the worst out of all three of these companies that we're talking about in this video today. BioWare, of course, you know, kind of a little bit dropped the ball of Mass Effect 3. Now, I personally didn't have a problem with the end of Mass Effect 3. Sure, there were some plot holes, and the end of Mass Effect 3 was actually kind of fixed with that extended cut DLC they put out for free. So I never personally had a problem with Mass Effect 3. I actually think Mass Effect 3 is the best of those three games. However, Mass Effect Andromeda, a completely different story. Now, I do have, know people that actually really like Andromeda, and I will side with, I think, Andromeda had the overall best combat of all the Mass Effect games. I think they finally really honed it in in that game. It's everything else surrounding Andromeda that falls apart. The story is incredibly lackluster. I didn't care. I couldn't name a single character from Andromeda at this point, because I think they were all just so unmemorable. And it was just kind of another Mass Effect. Like, they had so many opportunities to do so many different things with the Mass Effect universe, and they kind of just made another Mass Effect, you know, but without the characters you care about. And then the writing was just, it was like their B team, because their A team was too busy over here working on Anthem. And that's their other big failure this generation. You know, you look at Anthem, Anthem was kind of like their idea of, hey, let's make a Destiny-type game, except that game failed because... It just didn't capture the audience that, uh, that they thought they were going to capture. You know, everything about that game was broken when it launched. All the loot was broken. There just wasn't enough to do. People just didn't like that game. And it got worse and worse and worse. And now that's why you could walk into a Walmart or a GameStop and find a game for $5. People aren't playing it. And yes, I know that the team that made uh, Anthem are underground. They're trying to work on relaunching that game. But they should just cut ties with it. It's not going to work. And so Bioware, this of all three of these companies, I felt did the worst this generation because they had two big pivotal games come out, both failed massively, and now you have to ask yourself, what's next? Do you just make a Mass Effect 4 and, and go with the idea that Shepard's not dead? Like, what, what do you do? Um, for me personally, what I would like to see them do is to go back and revisit some of those characters that are still alive in the Mass Effect universe. Why not make a Mass Effect spinoff game starting Garrus? You know, that would be really interesting. There's no reason why they can't do that. And I think something like that, take, a, take an established character from the Mass Effect universe, not Shepard, 
and kind of branch it off into its own game, I think would really be something that would bring fans back, but also make a lot of sense for them and make up a lot of goodwill for these two games that just really, really failed. So anyways, guys, those are three companies that really dropped the ball this past council generation. And those are some ideas of how I think they could, you know, retain that within the next council generation. I would love to know in the comments below what companies, what, what companies and franchises do you think really failed this generation and how do you think they could come back in this new upcoming council generation? As always, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, until next time.